so far we have thrown the heating system on one story only but still it's already possible to try to run calculations and indeed I recommend not waiting with calculations until you draw everything. Why is that? Because while you draw the system's elements, while you enter data in the table, you may commit some mistakes, you can forget about something, and it's just easier to correct the mistakes quicker after you commit them. And that is especially important in case of big systems with repeated elements. For example, let's imagine that we've got the building that has got 10 same or similar stories. So, we would draw the system just on one story and then we would prefer to copy it to save time. But imagine that you commit five mistakes. To correct these five mistakes, hopefully it won't take you that much time. But if you multiply these five mistakes by 10, then you would get 50 mistakes to correct. Very repeated mistakes, so it won't be too difficult to correct them, but it would take you significantly more time. Before the real calculations, the program checks whether data is correct. So now let's imagine that we committed a mistake. For example, let's say that we have forgotten to enter the water capacity of the boiler. And now let's try to run the calculation. Why try? Try because we never know whether data is already correct, complete, and if the calculations will be run or just we will get some messages that we have to correct something. To run calculations we have to either click calculations in the menu or we can click this button with the calculator or we can just press F9 key and then the program checked data but it occurred not surprisingly that there are some errors do you want to view the diagnostics yes please show me the list indeed there is just one error and if we click this error message the program moves the drawing to this place and shows us the appropriate element and then we can easily correct this mistake i will write again 15 liters that's water volume and now i will run calculations again and I got another list, but this is not diagnostics of data anymore, this is diagnostics of results. And as you see here, we've got quite a lot of messages, however, majority of these messages result from the fact that we have drawn the system only on one floor. So there are some more rooms that require heating, but we haven't designed any heating system in these rooms yet. So. It's obvious that the program informs us about this problem. So, now let me tell you about calculation process a little bit more in detail. Some kind of secret information, just for your knowledge. Of course, I'm kidding. Now, there are three main phases of the calculation process. The first one is checking the data program checks whether data is OK, complete, and if everything is OK, then the program goes to the second step, which is the real calculations, calculation the flows, selecting the diameters of pipe, selecting radiator sizes, and so on and so on, depending on the scope of calculations that you have selected in the global data. And then there is the third and very important phase. This is checking the results. The program has got some criteria and analyzes the designed system. And if something is not okay, an appropriate message is created and 
you can see this list of messages. There are four levels of the messages. The first one is white. White message is just an information. The program believes that it's good that you know something, but it's nothing serious and most probably you won't have to take any actions related to this information. Then you've got yellow message. Uh, as you can see, for example, here. It's a warning. It's already something not okay, and the program wishes to warn you, but it's nothing serious yet. For example, here we have the surplus of the heating power. Uh, most probably the heating load in this room was very low. As I remember, we had more radiators in one room. And then the program selected the smallest radiator, but it's still too big. But it's not very important and you may decide whether to correct it or not. Then we've got the purple message. This is already quite serious and most probably you would at least consider whether it's possible to correct, to eliminate this problem. But in some cases, you can decide that it's not possible or rather that it maybe would be possible, but it wouldn't be economical. So it may happen that you leave such some of these messages not corrected, but you have to at least consider correcting them. And then the last one is red mistake. Uh, this is already quite a big problem and you should, if possible, you should rather eliminate it. But still, it's the designer who takes decisions. The program is just an expert tool, but you are the expert and the program is just to help you. After calculations, it's very important to see the results because please do apologize me, but I will remind you that it cannot be like that, that you enter data, you draw the system, the program does the calculations and you say, that's all. Why is that? Because it's not the program that is designing the system. It's you. The program is just a tool that you are using. So, the calculations results are available in two forms. A graphical one, so in the form of drawings, and in tables. So, let me show you first the tables. We can access results from the results menu, and let's select first, for example, global. So, as we had global data, now we have global results. And as you see, they are very global. Uh, if we don't enter the name of the project, address and so on, so we won't get that on the printouts of the results, of course. Uh, then we have the parameters, the temperatures of the agent and the resistance of the system and also the heating power. As you see, very global informations, very general ones. You can format it. If you use the right button of the mouse and then you can use format table command. And in this form you can design the final form of the results table. For example, let's switch off the date of calculations. Let's say that you don't want to make this information public, especially if you design the system too late. So now I will pr press close button. And as you see, the calculation date is not available anymore. As you see, there are many more tables. Just for example, let's have a look at the rooms. Then you've got the information about the rooms, 
heat load, whether it was covered or not, and also the radiators selected in the specific room, and so on. A very useful table is the table with the presets. In our system we've got valves integrated inside the radiators and we've got the presets that should be selected on these valves. For precise analysis, the circuits table may be useful because as you'll see uh, there are very precise informations, very similar to manual calculations. So even though this, this calculation are done automatically by the program, you've got full access to the details of calculations. So in case of any problems, any doubts, you can check it and you can establish very precisely what's the reason of the specific problem. Now, let's see the results in the graphical form. To do that, please select Results menu and then Drawings. And Ctrl R to watch it a little bit better. And these are the results in the graphical form. Now, let me explain you the main principle of drawings in this software. There are two main kinds of drawings drawings with data and drawings with the results and you you can edit only the drawings with the data and the drawings with the results are prepared by the program during calculation process so if you wish to correct something you have to go back to drawings with data correct it, but the changes won't be seen in the drawings with the results until next calculations. So drawings with results always reflect the state of the last calculations. If we have a look closer at this drawing, then we'll see, oops, there is no pump. We have forgotten about the pump. Or, to be more precise, I have forgotten, because it wasn't you. So I'm sorry, I have forgotten about the pump. How to correct it? First, we have to go back to the drawing with data. So I will select data menu and then drawings. Now let's zoom it a little bit. And we have to check, we have to choose the pump from equipment tab. And let's enter it here maybe let's move it a little bit so we've got already the pump in the drawing with data but if we go back to drawings with results then you won't see the pump why is that of course we haven't run the calculations yet so let's run it and now you see the pump also in the drawing with the results. Now let's see the whole drawing with the results again. And then you'll see that something is missing. The labels. There are some labels in case of the radiators and rooms. But in case of other elements like pipes and the pump, we have to add these labels manually. So to do that, we have to go back to the drawings with data. We can use also this button. And we can check from the structure tab, there is this element, this is the label and probably would wish to add a label here to present the information especially the selected diameter and so on and so on uh, 
Uh, let's connect also a label to the pump. And now we have to run the calculations again. And let's go back to the drawings with the result. We can use this button as well. And as you see, now we've got the informations about the pipes. You can have a look at the diameters, the information about isolations. Then you'll see that you have to correct some locations because we have here the label that is not very clear. So to correct that, we have to go back to drawing with data. And of course, this wasn't a very good position, uh, but that happens, especially that the size of label uh, in the drawing with the results can be different, can be bigger. So let's run the calculations again. Let's go to the drawing with the results again. And then you'll see that this label has been corrected. Very nice thing about the labels is that you can edit them and you can decide what information and in what form should be presented. To do that, you can either go to results menu and select the last command format of labels, or you can just double click one of the labels. And in this new window, you can design your labels. We've got here the standard set of labels and you can edit this set, but it's better to create your own one. I can add a new one using the button add and let's give a symbol, for example, my. You can have many sets of labels, styles, and you can very, very easily, very fast switch between them. You can have, for example, another set for the person that is going to verify the design and another one for the contract. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's say that you would need the information about the diameter. And this is my new tab, just the number. Uh, we can add some more elements. For example, I can switch on the title and units. And now my label looks like that. Of course, it's not bad to have information about the insulations. You've got a few possibilities. I can use this one, for example. Again, it's numbers. I won't say that much. It's better to have also title and units. Sorry. Now, this information is much more precise. And just as an example, let's say that we would like to have also the mass flex. So let's put it as well. Title, units. If you like, you can also add some other text, for example, equation. And just to show you the possibilities, you can turn on the frames if you like. So now my labels look like that. You can design labels for the drawing with data separately and for the drawing with results separately because at the stage of results um, there is much more information available.